All right, so I'm very excited to be telling you about how we solved this question six of the IMO 2023 live in one of our the senior classes. Okay, so all the students and we all just kind of teamed together and we solved this question. Okay, um, and it's it's a rather nice solution and I, because I think it can be used to solve many different problems. And maybe I'll, I'll give you a very rough summary of what it took for us to solve it okay um okay so the question roughly can be described by this diagram here yeah and we want the circles a1 a2 a and b1 b2 b and c1 c2 c so there's, there's three circles going through each of those three points stop making noise okay and we want to show that they all intersect at the same two points so we want it to look something like this so it's like they all intersect at these two points yeah okay so one thing right off the bat is if two circles intersect um like this at two points then um the the, the line that joins these two points is sort of uh in some sense a famous it has a it has a name it's called the radical axis Okay. All right. So that's something. Um, it's sort of a, a main character in this story because, so, so what we what we end up trying to prove, okay, is that um, the the radical axes of all the pairs of circles are the same. So they are coaxial circles. Yeah. So, so. So you just have. Yeah. So like, so for example, you know, like if, if these two circles intersect with this radical axis, where can you put the third circle? Like if you put the th third circle here, then this radical axis is going to be different, right? So you can't do that. Okay. And... And so, if the third circle intersects the, the um, see, like the the only the only points where the only points where this this circle even intersects um, that that line, right, is at these two points. So. So if the other circle intersects this either of these circles at all, it has to intersect at those two points for it to have the same radical axis. Okay. So essentially, what we want, what we just want to prove is we want to prove that the circles intersect at all. Okay. And then we want to prove that they have the same radical axis. Okay. And that'll prove that they all intersect at the same two points. Does that make sense? Okay. So we kind of showed in class how they intersect, um, but we can go through a little bit of it again. Okay. Um, so why do we these circles intersect at all? So it's kind of a nice question because it's a special case of the question, right? The question is asking you for them to all intersect to the same point. We're just showing that they intersect at all. Yeah. So so usually giving a weaker version of the problem is a good way to do maths problems. And so I guess, you know, one thing we can focus on is this, um, the segment B2A1 and the segment A2B1, you know? Okay. And let us just focus on this particular diagram, but the argument basically works in general because up to some relabeling of ABC, you basically get this diagram. Okay, um, so if you focus on this diagram, you can see that like if you, so A1, B2 is a sequence, is, is going to pass, so A, A2 is on the A circle, right? So this is like the A circle, and A2 is on this circle, yeah? yeah. Okay, and if, and if you kept going from B1 to A2, you're going to hit the line A, A1, which is inside the circle, right? And so that means to get inside the circle with a line, it must also go outside the circle, okay? And so B2 is actually outside the circle. So B the B circle is outside, yeah? 
Okay. So if we use the same argument, um, if we use the same argument for the bottom here, a one b two, yeah, you can see that. Oh no! So I, I did a two b one just there. Oh, so that should be b one. Sorry. So a two is here, b one is there. Okay. If we do the same argument for b two a one. And then we see that A1 is outside the circle B circle, right? Yeah. And and because because if you if you keep going, you're gonna hit a chord of the B circle, right? Um. So 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 if they don't intersect, they have to be inside one another, right? Yeah. And the thing is, they can't both be inside and outside at the same time because the other thing says that the B circle is inside, right? Okay, so actually they have to they have to intersect. Okay, and okay, so that's as much as we're going to deal with the intersecting part. So now it suffices to prove. So once you show the circles intersect, it suffices to prove that they have the same radical axis. Okay, and and then then you've solved the problem. Okay, all right. So so the nice thing about this problem, we use barycentric coordinates. Okay, which which takes advantage of the symmetry of the triangle. Okay, so what's Barry centric coordinates? I love Barry. So we call this Barry bash. Okay, so what happens with Barry centric coordinates is you take um, basically coordinates instead of having like when you're doing chord bash or Cartesian coordinates, you have two numbers, you have three numbers here. Okay, so for example, the the point A is one zero zero. The point B is zero one zero. The point C is zero zero one. And Barry means heavy, okay? Centric means middle. So the coordinates like a center of mass coordinates, okay? So the definition can be said like if you put um, x kilograms at A, y kilograms at B, and z kilograms at C, right? Yeah. Then the the center of mass of that setup is the coordinates of has coordinates x, y, z. Okay, does that make sense? Um, or equivalently, and I'm not going to go into the details. If you look at the areas, um, so it could be also described as aerial coordinates. Where, um, if you have, so this is your point P, right? If you look at the point P and the area it makes, um, with the base each side of the triangle, so P, B, C. P A C and P um, P A B. Then it's also going to give you. So the ra the area is also going to give you another representation of the point in these coordinates. Okay. Um, but the point is, this set of coordinates is nice with respect to triangles. You usually pick your coordinate system to be symmetric with respect to the the object of your your question. Okay. All right. Okay, so there's this very nice formula, okay? So there's this very nice formula in barycentric coordinates. Okay. Called Conway's formula. Okay, and what that formula tells you is it tells you the coordinates of a point P, okay? If you know the angle it makes with one of the sides of the triangle, okay. So if you know like this angle here and that angle there, then it gives you the coordinates of P in barycentric coordinates. That makes sense. So you can see this formula is perfect for this problem, right? Because it immediately gives you the coordinates of everything, okay? It gives you well, a one. You don't really need the formula because it's so symmetric, right? But can you see like if you want to find the coordinates of A2, you're, you're just using the same angles, right? Like the angle that you got for A1 is actually what you're using to get B2 as well, right? You see? So, like, if you know any, if you know these angles, okay, and these angles are related to the angles in the question, right? Because the isosceles triangles, right? Um, yeah, oh, I should also mention that 
we also know that you know a1 is further from the it's it's on this on the bottom of the centroid the, the so the the center of mass is in the green dot yeah we know we know the angles are 120 here so we know that actually a1 is below the green dot because 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 if the angle if it was above the angle would be less than 120 and the other angles can be at most 180 so then it can't be 480 right so we actually know it's on the bottom okay anyway so um yeah so can you see with conway's formula if we just label these three angles here like these three angles we can get the coordinates of all the points using conway's formula okay so i'm not telling you what conway's formula is i'm just kind of telling you what what like I'm not telling you exactly what it is, but I'm telling you what its purpose is. Okay. Um, okay. So that's really nice. You get the coordinates, right? You have the coordinates of all the points in this diagram, which is usually like, you know, if you can achieve that in a bash, um, you're usually doing pretty good. And that's usually after some work. Okay. But here it's all for free. Can you see that? There's no actual work that needs to be done. Okay. So it's also. It's also known in the barycentric coordinates what the equation of a circle is. Okay, so we know the equation of a circle in barycentric coordinates. Okay, and so what we do, so, I mean, the naive method just works. So if we just substitute the three points into the equation of a circle, like the general equation, we can find what the equation of each circle is. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So usually this so so and and it's especially nice because these circles go through the vertices of the triangle. Okay. So usually the the equation of the circle is kind of like um it's got like three parameters. Yeah. Because you, you need three points, but like one of the parameters is just zero because it goes through the vertices of the circle. Okay. But the other two are not completely trivial, but they're not easy. They're not hard to find. Okay. So basically, um, you know, when you, when you're doing equation with circle and chord bash, you kind of have like, you know, the, the center of the circle, the X, Y values and the radius. So it's just three, it's three parameters still. Yeah. And so if you know the equation, you just sub in three points and you can find those three values. Okay. But here it's really easy because subbing in one of the vertices, actually just gives you one of the values of zero right away and you only need to find two values. Okay. Okay. So then you do that. Okay. And once you've got the equation of the circle, there's actually a really magic way to get, so you can actually get the equation of the radical axis instantly. Okay. So just reading off the equation of the circles. Okay. So you can get the equation of radical axis. Okay. And then, and then we just need to compare that the equations of the radical axes are equal and then we're done. Okay. So that's actually the complete bash. And, uh, I do believe it can be done under exam conditions. Uh, even though you have to actually be quite good at doing things like Conway's formula. If you get the angle signs mixed up at the start, it could take you a lot, a lot longer. Okay. So you gotta be careful how the things are defined. And also like, if you've never done this before, this is definitely sounding easier than it, like it's easier said than done, right? Like, oh, let's do all these things, okay. Um, okay, I can just do all these things, but then like doing all these things could take like a lot of time and a lot of energy and you kind of run out of those things towards the end, right? Okay, so just, just bear with me, Lucas, you don't leave just yet. So, and then, okay, but then if you've had some experience doing this, you might react that it's easier said than done in another way. Okay. Because you're like, well, it's easy to say you can find the equation, but I'm finding the equation of three circles and I'm trying to find the equation of radical axis three times. Right. And, and, and so there's, so there's a lot of execution that's actually involved in these steps that people underestimate if they haven't tried it. Okay. But if you get good at this kind of stuff, you can actually use symmetry. So you can swap the labeling of the triangle and stuff. So that if you find the equation of just one of the circles, you get the other two for free. No, okay. You just, you just switch, right? But people don't necessarily realize so if you, you're not tripling the work, it's only, it's, it's not, it's not, it's, it's, it's a third of the work that you expect actually. Okay. And the same with the radical axis. Um, you get all three at once. 
And when you're checking that they're the same, okay, like even even just a, 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 a part of the check, if you use the symmetry, you can get the other parts of the check. Does that make sense? So if you abuse this kind of symmetry, because these, this, there's a lot of cyclic symmetry here, right? Um, you can actually get, you can actually halve or you can you can decrease the amount of work by an order of magnitude, okay? So t one tenth the work that it takes, okay? And then, yeah, obviously, um, yeah, and it's very nice and it does turn out to be equal. So I should mention that Conway's formula in, involves a little bit of trick, okay? So it, it's 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 kind of it, it involves the cotan of the angles, and and so the end when you're checking things are equal, the final expression is gonna there's gonna be a, like a angle sum formula with tan, okay? That's used. So I might I might mention it here. So like if you know like tan alpha plus beta equals tan alpha plus tan beta. Guys, one minus guys, hold on. It's, it's 8 o'clock. I, I need to go. Yep. All right. Have a good one, Lucas. Bye. All right. Bye. All right. So, yeah. So, 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 so it's actually a little bit like not completely trivial that things cancel out. So, when people do it for the first time, they might not know what to do. Okay. Um, but yeah, so so that's supposed to be a really hard problem, and and this method actually makes it really easy. Okay, so you know, Lima six. If you do it normally, I think it's like it's definitely a senior problem. It's definitely a hard problem. But if if you if you use this method, I think it becomes an intermediate problem. Okay, so it's it's slightly out of your reach right now, but um, but but the methods are definitely not beyond you. Okay. All right, that's it. I am a question six. Question number eight. Yeah.